Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, KSP for the algorithm of course. I have to say it like over and over and over again, KSP, KSP, Kerbal Space Program, Program, Program. There you go, I think the algorithm picked me up now. Okay, let's go. So for this career mode, we went back to the X01, the uh, SSTO that was going to replace the Trident, tri yeah, Trident Star. I put more power into the uh, X01 and gave it a little bit more of a, a cargo bay. And thanks to everyone's advice on what to name it, I declare it now as the Dragon Star. The Dragon Star can carry two satellites into orbit as well as passengers compared to the Triton Star which could only carry the one satellite and no passengers. So definitely a better upgrade. This sadly means that the Triton Star is now obsolete and will be mothballed. But before then, the Triton Star will have one last mission for old time's sake. She will be putting a satellite into orbit and then the satellite will go as far as it can in order to test out comms range and all that jazz. Basically just a small little mission, more of a, more of a publicity stunt than anything else. With the Triton Star now decommissioned, the new workhorse for SSTOs is of course the new Dragon Star. There will be a mission shortly here soon enough to replace the aging satellites that are around orbit of Kerbin. But before then, we have a problem. In the live stream that I did, I rushed to make a new star drive for the Enterprise. So the star drive was faulty at best. The lights weren't all that great, and the RCS, the new technology that we unlocked for RCS, wasn't uh, placed properly on the craft. So to remedy that, we're going to build a new star drive, like a star drive Mark II, but all it is is just what I forgot to do in the first one. It's got more lights and better RCS placement. The launch pretty much went smoothly. The operation went pretty smooth, separated the old star drive and placed in the new one. Or should I say installed the new one. But I didn't want to just throw away the old star drive. That, that was a lot of meat and potatoes right there. So I opted to try to save it. The idea was that just before impact into the ocean, the Kerbal would jump out, eject, and observe the ship going into the ocean. There was no parachute on the actual capsule itself. This is due to the fact that I only have like 255 parts for 
for the actual build of any vessel right now until I upgrade a building or the space plane hangar. So I had used all 255 allowable part count and sadly a parachute was not one of them. Surprisingly though, very surprisingly though, had I had more time and thought about it better, it's very possible that this ship could have landed under its own power. Not sure if it could, because I know the, the, lower, the lower the altitude for some engines, the weaker they are. But in this instance, I was almost able to stop completely hover at a high altitude, just burning the engines that were on board the old star drive. Not sure again, not sure if it would have actually worked if I had gotten closer to sea level, but it's something to think about. During impact into the ocean, after the ejection, after the Kerbal ejected, ejection procedure, surprisingly the uh, star drive was mostly intact. Just the back part of it was smashed in, that's all. Pretty cool, so we got a little bit of funds from that. Granted, I've heard that the farther away from KSC you are <laughs> KSCUR. The less funds you get back from everything, but it was something better than just throwing it away. So after that, I just went ahead and started with the refueling missions to refuel the new star drive that was attached to the Enterprise. But I noticed that the first stage, while you can land it and hit the whole uh, recovery button on the very top, I thought to myself, could I actually build a boat or ship that could recover it for me? Now granted, I'm not going to sit here and recover every single first stage manually, but the idea was to build a ship that could actually do it if I really wanted to, and then just have it sit out there, so that every time a first stage came in, you would see it sitting there waiting for the first stage to land, knowing that it has the, it has the capability of recovering it, which I thought would be pretty cool. So. I went to work. It went through a few iterations, which we'll talk about later, but it ended up working pretty good in the end. So the first refueling mission went pretty smooth, no problems. I tried to land as close as I could to the KSC, but after the uh, third or fourth attempt, I was like, you know what, screw it. It's close enough, damn it. I sent the recovery ship to capture the first stage of the recent fuel mission. Everything worked out pretty good. It has great maneuverability. I put small little jet engines on four corners of the ship so it can turn left or right in place or even move side to side. The two Weasley engines in the back had the ability to move the ship forward and reverse. But when I attached to the first stage, the Weasley engines were suddenly blocked by the first stage. So sadly, it couldn't go anywhere if it was docked with the first stage. I remedied it. <laughs> I remedied this later, so just know that yes, it does work. Everything you see here works, and now it can also move forward without a problem. So, cool beans, I'll have the uh, ship crewed by two Kerbals, the two rescued ones. We need to start rescuing more Kerbals, by the way. We're running out of Kerbals. Not because they're dying or anything, it's just, you know, we got some in the space station, we got some now that are out in, out in sea, it's... Uh, it's getting a little thin there. Oh, there. So now that we have a recovery ship in place, we're just launching a whole bunch of refueling missions. The Star Mule is, a, is an amazing little refueler for the technology of the time and part count limit and weight limit. It maxes out on everything. In order for us to make a bigger, better ship, we would have to upgrade a building, which we simply don't have the funds for right now. Once the Enterprise is refueled, we have in our grasp a mission to take a whole bunch of civilians to Minmus. Paying customers, I say. But the Enterprise is not going to house the civilians. It will transport their lander to Minmus. The lander itself will house the civilians. However, the facilities that are on board the Enterprise, such as mess hall and exercise equipment and all that jazz, will be available for the civilians. But they will be sleeping and pretty much living inside of the Minmus lander. Now the Minmus lander isn't no joke, it's it's very fairly spacious and large. The civilians will of course be uh, kept within the first two habitat modules that house the food and exercise equipment and all that jazz and entertainment, whereas the second and third modules are for officers only and contain everything from communications to control. Once at Minmus, they will land on Minmus, have a jolly old good time, come back to the Enterprise, and head back towards Kerbin. For the foreseeable future, we'll be looking at 
doing more of these missions in order to gain more money, as well as possibly rescuing more Kerbals in order to gain more staff. Uh, however, I do know that eventually they're going to start asking us to go to Duna and other planets, and that's just going to have to wait until we get more money and more technology. So that's pretty much it for this round. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for being here. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. It helped me out a lot, and if you really, 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 really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. We also have a membership program if you're interested. If you become a member, you get a little cool emojis and badges and stuff. Pretty cool. Check it out. And don't forget to hit that bell notification if you want to see other videos that I put out other than KSP because the algorithm, if I put out another video that doesn't have anything to do with KSP and it sees that all you watch is space and KSP stuff, it will not let you know that I put out a video at all. YouTube is gangster like that. But if you hit the little bell notification, you'll see that I put out something. Kind of like the flag video that I just put out recently. It's gotten so little views, even though it's about KSP. I have no idea why, other than the fact that YouTube has not broadcasted it out to anybody because it has no mention of SSTOs or anything of that nature, which is weird. I don't know why that, well, you know what, screw it. But anyway, love you all, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.